Hello students, today I will be talking to you about current and potential difference. Current is the rate of flow of charge. Current is rate of flow of charge. So the speed at which a charge flows is current. What is current? It is the charge that flows in unit time. Charge flown per unit time. Like distance upon time gives us the speed. So charge upon time gives us current. So current I is equal to charge upon time. Suppose I have a conductor, a wire, and the amount of charge that flows through it per unit time is defined as current. How many charge divided by in how much time is current? The speed of flow of charge is current. The symbol for charge is Q. And the symbol for time is T. So Q upon T is I. The unit for charge is Coulomb. The scientist was Agasta Dean Coulomb. And the unit for time is seconds. So the unit for current is Coulomb per second. And Coulomb per second. Coulomb per second. Coulomb unit of charge. Second unit of time. And Coulomb per second has a special name called Ampere. Coulomb per second is called ampere. So current is charge upon time, Q upon T, Q coulomb per second and ampere. Rate of flow of charge is called current. Now there is some convention. Suppose I have a conductor over here. And some electrons flow from X to Y. Electrons are flowing from X to Y. What is electron? Electron is charge. Charge is flowing in some time. So there will be current charge upon time. But if electrons flow like this, it is a convention. Note my words. It is a convention. No one can say why it is done. There are a lot of argument on it is a convention that current goes like this. Current goes like this. No one can say why exactly. But if electrons are going in this direction, it has been assumed, it has been man-made that current will go in opposite direction to the direction of flow of electron. If electrons goes from X to Y, current will grow from Y to X. Some people also say that current is the flow of positive charge. Positive charge, so that's why the direction of current is like this. But that's not true. Current is the flow of charge. You do not have positive charge and negative charge. You just have charges. Even positive charge can flow, negative charge can flow, and both can flow. Current is not defined on one charge. Current is the rate of flow of charge total. So if electron goes like this, current will go like this. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now we have a question. If n electrons flow from A to B in t seconds, find current given charge on one electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Now here is a question. We have n electrons which are flowing from A to B in time t seconds and you have to find the current. So the formula for current reads I is equals to Q upon T. Now what is Q? Here are n electrons and the charge on one electron is this much. So the total charge will be charge on one electron multiplied by number of electron. What is charge? Charge is on electron. And how many electrons are flowing? N. So charge on one electron into multiplied by number of electrons. So N multiplied by 1.6, 10 power minus 19 coulomb. That is the charge. If one electron flows, this much charge flows. Two electron flows, double of charge flows. Three, triple. And N is an N time charge flow. And time is and that is the answer. So we can also say current is equals to N. And this term charge on one electron is abbreviated as E in physics. Written as E in physics in short form. 1.6 into 10 power minus 19. This is the charge on one electron. So we say N E upon T. So current has another formula N E upon T. But wait. The direction of current will be B to A. Since electrons are flowing from A to B, 
if this is A, if this is B, electron flows from A to B, current flows from B to A, Q upon T. And if there are electrons, charge on electron is 1.6 10 power minus 19 coulomb called E. Charge on 2 electron, 2E, 3 electron, 3, and electrons, any. So this much charge flows per unit time. That is correct. This is correct, okay. Conceptual points of current. I have a point over here, and three currents are coming like this 2 ampere, 3 ampere, 1 ampere. And here is the last branch. Now you have to say what will happen over here. 2 ampere comes from this side, 3 ampere from this side, 1 ampere from this side. What will happen over here? How much current flows through it? Like this or like that, what will happen? Remember a rule at any junction, such a point is called junction, where all the trains meet, all the currents meet. At any junction, net inward current is equal to net outward current. Clear? 3 ampere inward, 2 ampere inward, 1 ampere inward. So here will be the current outward. Net inward, 1, 2, 3. Inward means coming towards the junction. These three currents are coming towards the junction. And outward means leaving the junction. This is I is leaving the junction. So I is equal to 6 ampere and like this. This principle also tells us that current is not a vector. Vector quantity cannot be added like this. Current is not a vector. No, no, no. Current has a magnitude. Current has a direction. But still, current is not a vector. What was current? Current is charge per time. What is the direction of current opposite to the flow of electron? This is the magnitude of current and opposite to the direction of flow of electron is the direction. Current has magnitude and direction is still current is not a vector. Remember, everything that has direction cannot be a vector. That is not the definition of vector. You have read wrong. No, this is wrong. Vector are something else which follow vector law and vector law is something else. So in short, understand current is not a vector. So is current a scalar? Uh, for your syllabus, it's fine. For a class 9, 10, we can say current is a scalar, but it is a tensor quantity. Tensor, tensor, T and S O R, tensor. Anyways, over here, we will say current is scalar. So, scalar quantity, 2 inverse, 3 inverse, 1 inverse, and 6 output. Likewise, I give you a question over here. Suppose 3 ampere current like coming like this, 3 ampere coming like this. What will happen? Input current, inward current, 3, 3, 6, output, 6. So this is not vector addition. This is not how vectors are added. This is how scalar are added. So current does not, uh, is a, not a vector quantity. And this is the law of current that at any junction, net inward current is equal to net outward current. Okay. Another conceptual question of current. I have a wire like this, this is a wire, this is a conductor from A to B and from here a current of 5 ampere goes. So the question is what will be the current at B? What will be the current at B? Equal to 5 ampere, less than 5 ampere or greater than 5 ampere? Since this cross section is small, is there any change or not? No. The amount of current entering one section should leave another section. So the current over B should also be 5 ampere. Current does not depend upon cross section area. It does not depend upon this area. Current will be same throughout the whole wire. It does not depend upon area. How many electrons enter over here must leave those many electrons from B. 
So number of electrons entering should be equal to number of electrons leaving and hence this current and this current should be the same. Current does not depend upon cross section area. The amount of current entering should leave this point B. So these are the some uh, basic concepts about current. And if I ask you why current flows, you will simply say because of the flow of electron or charges. Yeah, that's true. That is why current flows. Let us talk about conductors as well as semiconductors. Moreover, insulators. The three classes in which uh, the electrical conductivity is divided conductor, semiconductor, and insulator. Conductor have large number of free charges. The charges are free, they can flow. So for conductor, the current I will be high. They can give high current because there are large number of free charges and free charges can flow. For insulator, there are no free charge or there are very less free charge, either very less or no free charge. If there are no charges which can move, there can be no current. So the current is very, very small or nearly zero. Those are insulators. But this is a class that confuses us. Semiconductors, neither conductor nor insulator. Semiconductor. What are semiconductors? There are two semiconductors which are very famous. Silicon and germanium. Periodic table, group 14, silicon, germanium. Just below carbon, below carbon silicon, Below silicon, germanium. Group 4. What are conductor? Conductor are copper. Okay. And electrolytes. Solutions which conduct electricity. What are insulators? Plastic. Wood. These are insulators. But this is a class that confuses us. Semiconductor. Semiconductor are those which have large number of free charge but sometimes they also have a small number of free charge and this can be controlled you can control when it can have large number of free charge and when it can have a small number of free charge it can behave as insulator it can behave as conductor, both or in between. You can vary the conductivity of semiconductor. Sometimes the semiconductor can supply high current, some kind it can supply low current. Because you can vary, you can vary, you can vary number of free charges. How? Do different semiconductors have different free charges? or the same semiconductor can have any number of free charges. The latter is true. Any semiconductor, silicon, germanium, can have less number of free charge as well as large and that I can change, that we can change. If the semiconductor is pure, if it is pure, then it has a small number of free charge and if it is impure, then it has large number of free charge. So you add impurity, Number of free charge increases, current increases, conductivity increases. You can increase the conductivity of semiconductor by including impurities. So semiconductor can have high current as well as low current. So these are the classifications of different conductors and electrical on the basis of current. This was all about current. Now we will talk about potential difference, PD. PD. PD, 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 potential difference. To understand the term potential difference, why potential difference? Why? You know heat flows and heat flows from a body at higher temperature to a body at lower temperature. Yes, heat flows from higher temperature to a body at 
lower temperature. You know water even flows. Does water flow? Yes, water flow from high height to a low height. Yes or no? From a higher place, water flows to a lower height. So anything that flows, it requires a difference. For flow of heat, you require temperature difference. Flow of water, you require height difference. For anything, from flow, flow of knowledge, suppose my teacher has more knowledge than me, then knowledge flows from him to me. So there should be a channel to flow and that point that starts flowing is the difference of something. So the, for the flow of current, we require potential difference. If there is a potential difference, current will flow. If the potential is same, current will not flow. If the temperature is same between two bodies, current will, uh, heat will not flow from one body to another. If I have two uh, places which have the same height, then water will not flow from one height to another. So if potential is same, current cannot flow. For the flow of current, we require potential difference. Now what is potential difference? To understand potential difference, you have to get one term that is unit positive charge. Unit positive charge. This is the guy that will help us. Plus one coulomb. Positive plus unit one charge coulomb. Plus one coulomb is the guy who will help us in potential difference. Unit positive charge. There is one house over here and one house over here. I have two houses. A charge of plus one coulomb is ran, is running or is made to run from this point to this point. It's pushed from this point to this point. Now in pushing this charge, we have to apply force and we will be doing displacement. We will be doing work on this charge. We will be spending energy on this charge. Now the work done on unit positive charge to move it from one place to another place between two points is called the potential difference the amount of work done in taking this charge from this house to this house is the potential difference between these two houses how to get potential difference first get this unit positive charge I asked what is the potential difference between A and B. You take plus 1 coulomb charge. Move it from A to B. And the amount of work done in moving plus 1 coulomb from A to B is the potential difference between A and B. This is how to do potential difference. It is the work done on plus one coulomb charge in moving it between two points. What is the potential difference between me and you? We take one coulomb charge and I will place it from myself to yourself. And the work that I will do will be called, that work will be called potential difference. Potential difference is the amount of work done per charge. Amount of work done per charge on one coulomb charge work done per charge. So the formula for potential difference delta V, the symbol for potential difference is delta difference and this is potential. The symbol of potential is V, not P, it is V. Difference, potential, delta V. Potential difference between two points is the work done on one coulomb charge. Yani work done, that means work done per charge. One coulomb means per charge. Work done upon charge. Q or you try to charge. Potential difference between two points is work done per unit charge between those two points. Clear? So delta V becomes work done upon charge Q. This is called potential difference. The potential difference between two points is the amount of work done on a unit positive charge in taking the unit positive charge from one point to the other point. The unit for work is Joule and for charge it is Coulomb. So the unit of potential difference is Joule per Coulomb. Joule per Coulomb. And this Joule per Coulomb has a name called Volt. Joule per Coulomb is called Volt. 
So this is entirely new concept. What is potential? What is potential difference? Potential difference between any two points. How will we define it? We'll take one Coulomb charge. We'll displace it from one place to another. And the amount of work done in displacing, that amount of work done is the potential difference. And potential difference is work done per unit charge. W upon Q. W upon Q. Work done per unit charge. Work done is Joule. Charge is Coulomb. Joule per Coulomb. Joule per Coulomb is called volt. The SI unit of potential difference is volt. Let us do numerical. Let us do a question. Everything will be clear. Let us do a question. So here is a question of potential difference. There is a point A and there is a point B. We took a charge of plus one Coulomb from A to B and the work done is one joule find potential difference. So you will say delta V is equals to work done upon charge. Work done is one joule. Charge is one Coulomb. One joule upon Coulomb. Joule upon Coulomb is volt. So this is one volt. So the potential difference these two points between these two points is one volt. If I'm taking a charge of one Coulomb from one point to another, the work done is one joule, then the potential difference between those two points is one volt. This is the definition of one volt. SI unit of potential difference is one volt. The amount of work done in taking plus one Coulomb charge from A to B, if the amount of work done is one joule, then the potential difference is one volt. Another question. There's a point A, there's a point B. Point A has 50 volt potential. Point B has 30 volt potential. And we have two Coulomb charge taking it from A to B. Find the work done. So you'll say delta V is equals to work done upon charge. We have to find work W. And what is charge? The charge is in this case plus two Coulomb. So I write plus two Coulomb. What is delta V? The change in potential 50 minus 30, 20 is equals to W upon 2 Coulomb. W is equals to 20 volt into 2 Coulomb. What is volt? Volt is joule per Coulomb. Work done per unit charge. 2 Coulomb. Coulomb, Coulomb cancel. And get the answer. The work done is 40 joule. To take this joule Coulomb charge from E to B, the work done is 40. So remember the formula. Delta V is equals to W upon Q. A slight of confusion is there in your mind and my mind as well. That how I've written 20 over here. I should write minus 20 or maybe 20 is correct. To clear that doubt, we have to do one more point and that is, suppose I have over here a point A and here point B. And I take a charge Q from A to B. I take a charge Q from A to B. Then the potential difference is equal to the work done upon charge. Now we go from A to B. So here we will write final minus initial. A to B, final minus initial. How do you find change of anything? Final minus initial. So I am going from A to B. So I write potential of B minus potential of A is equal to work done in taking the charge from A to B. Divide by charge Q. Now this is the exact formula. Now this is not delta V. This is the exact formula. VB minus VA is equal to work done in taking charge from A to B divided by charge Q. I have a point X over here. Point Y over here. I take a Q charge from Y to X. From Y to X. So we will write potential of X minus potential of Y. Final minus initial. Since I took the charge from Y to X. Final minus initial is equal to work done in taking the charge from y to x divided by charge q. That is the exact how to write the formula. This can be called delta v as well, but this is the exact way.
to do it. Let us do an email calculation. There's a point A over here which has a potential of 10 volt and there's a point B whose potential is unknown. Whose potential is unknown. I have a minus 2 coulomb charge over here and I take it from A to B and the work done is 20 joules. Find the potential of B. I took a charge of minus 2 coulomb from A to B. The work done is 20 joule. Find the potential of B. So the charge goes from A to B. So B is the final point. VB minus VA is equal to work done from A to B. VB minus VA. Work done from A to B divided by charge Q. VB unknown. VA 10 is equal to work done 20 joules. Charge minus 2 coulomb. VB minus 10. Now this will be minus 10 and joule per coulomb will become volt. So VB is equal to minus 10 volt and this will come over this side plus 10 volt. Yes. So this will be 0 volt. The potential of point VB is 0 volt. This is how you can do. This will always not come 0. Don't worry. This is just a question. This is how to do this. VB minus VA is equal to work done from A to B upon charge Q. So, let us do another numerical. It will be more clear to you. There is a point M and there is a point N. The potential at N is say 50 volt and the potential at M is unknown. I took a charge of minus 3 coulomb from M to N and the work done is 30 volt find the potential of m so we took the charge from m to n n is the final point vn minus vm final minus initial is equals to work done in taking the charge from m to n divide by charge q vn it is known to us 50 minus vm unknown work done is 30 joules upon charge is minus 3 coulomb. So 50 minus Vm is equals to this will be minus 10 joule per coulomb will be volt. So Vm is equals to 50 plus 10 is equals to 60 volt. The potential of this point is 60 volt. This is how to do these questions. So there were two points current and then potential difference. If there is no potential difference, there is no current. Now there is a topic called potential at a point. Potential at some given point. This is not potential difference. Potential at some given point. How to do this? Remember that unit positive charge that guy plus one coulomb. We will use it again. Now suppose this is one house and we are required to find the potential of this house alone. What do you do? Set a point at infinity. Go to infinity, set a point. You took two points. You take a charge of plus one coulomb, that unit positive charge, and take it from infinity to this house. Now the work done in taking this plus one coulomb charge from infinity to this house is the work done on plus one coulomb charge from in taking it from infinity to A is equals to potential at A. This is the definition. You take a charge of plus one coulomb, bring it from infinity to A, then the work done is potential at A. Okay, let me tell you the inner details. Are you ready for the inner details? Be ready. Infinity point A took a charge of plus one coulomb from infinity to A. What can you write? V A 
minus v infinity final minus initial is equals to work done in taking from infinity to a divided by plus 1 coulomb charge divided by charge is that right potential difference i took the charge from infinity to a so i write v a minus v infinity is equals to work done from infinity to a divided by charge is it correct there is a concept in physics there is a concept in physics that potential at infinity is zero yes it is true it is a fact that potential at infinity is zero at this place the potential is zero now apply the formula for potential difference infinity to a v a minus v infinity work done infinity to a upon plus one cooler now i say potential at infinity is zero it is a concept so potential at infinity is zero v a minus zero is equals to work done from infinity to a plus one coulomb so potential at a this is zero is equals to work done in taking charge from infinity to a divided by plus one coulomb now what does this this potential at a is equals to amount of work done in taking a charge of plus one coulomb from infinity to a this is the potential of a work done on plus one coulomb in taking it from infinity to a this is the potential at a. this is how the definition came i took the charge from infinity to a i write v a minus v infinity work done from infinity to a divided by plus one coulomb now the potential at infinity is zero so i write zero this is the same v a is equals to work done in taking one coulomb charge from infinity to a it is the potential of point a the potential of a point is the amount of work done in taking a charge from infinity to that point. So there is a slight difference between potential difference and potential at a point. See how are they different? If they ask potential difference, between two points A and B, you take the charge from A to B, take the charge from A to B, right, VB minus VA is equals to work done from a to b divided by charge q if they ask potential at a point remember now there is only one point potential at a point you draw a point a and the other point is infinity take a charge q from infinity to a potential at a minus potential at infinity which is zero is equals to work done from infinity to a upon charge q here are the two formulas for calculating potential difference or potential at a point. Okay. Clear? Potential at a point, work done infinity to A on charge Q. Potential difference, VB minus VA is equal to what? Okay. Let us do a question. The question is, a charge, 2 coulomb is taken from infinity to a point by doing 30 joules of work find potential of that point so this is potential at a point potential at a point a is defined as amount of work done in taking charge from infinity to A divided by Q. So, the work done is 30 joules. The charge is 2 coulombs. 15 joule per coulomb is volt. So, potential of point A is 15 volt. And what 15 volt? Plus 15 volt. The formula is simple. Now, let me give you a bit more deep understanding of this. Here is a point A. It has a potential of plus 15 volt and here is infinity and there is a charge of plus 1 coulomb now you see there is plus this is plus this will repel this charge will repel from this plus will not like to come over this point so V 
we will do the work by doing 30 joules of work we will push this charge we will do our work and how much work has to be done 30 joule this is the whole summary because this is repelling this we have to do work okay so this is the feel of potential okay the potential at a point is 10 volt find amount of work done in bringing plus 5 coulomb charge from infinity to that point so potential at a point a is equals to work done in taking charge from infinity to a divided by charge q potential at point a is 10 volt work done we have to find infinity to a and charge q is plus 5 coulomb so work done in bringing the charge from infinity to a 10 volt into 5 coulomb volt is joule per coulomb multiplied by 5 coulomb this will be 50 joules you want to understand this this is a point a the potential is plus 10 volt from infinity we bring a charge of plus 5 coulomb this this will repel and when this will repel we have to do work to get it over here this does not wants to come over here positive positive repulsion so we do work and that work is how much 50 joules that is clear okay okay Now one more case, a bit complex one. In bringing minus three coulomb charge from infinity to point X, where potential is ten volt find work done so there is a point x infinity take a charge of minus 3 coulomb from infinity to x potential at x minus potential at infinity work done from infinity to x divided by charge q this will become zero and this is the formula we know so work done we have to find from infinity to x and the put charge is minus 3 coulomb and the potential is 10 volt so in this case the work done from infinity to x is 10 volt into minus 3 coulomb 10 joule per coulomb into minus 3 coulomb the answer is minus 30 joules i know that is confusing how the work done is negative and what do you mean by this what is happening let us see the situation the potential at this point is plus 10 volt and this charge is negative this charge will be attracted we do not do need to do work on this charge. It will go by itself. It will be attracted. The work is obtained. Whenever the work is negative, it is called work obtained. Work obtained. There is nothing uh, so tough in it. If the negative work, we say work obtained. Sir, what should we write? Work done, work obtained. You write W is equal to minus 30 joule. That is correct. 100% correct. But what is the meaning of negative work? It means it went by itself. And the work done is negative. Okay. So this was potential at a point and potential difference. Now I ask you a very simple question. And the most important one of this whole lecture. If there is a point A and there is a point B. And A point has some positive potential. B point has some negative potential. Suppose it has plus... 50 volt and B has minus 50 volt and have an electron more here now this electron will go towards this or go towards this electron has negative charge it will be repelled by negative charge and attracted by positive charge so electron will go like this now this is minus 50 volt this is plus 50 volt this is a lower potential B point is at lower potential it is at negative potential and A point is at higher potential you have to put an electron, it will go 
it will be repelled by negative and attracted by positive so it will go from lower potential to higher potential electron always flows from lower potential to higher potential what will be the direction of current the direction of current is opposite to the direction of flow of electron so current always flows from higher potential to lower potential because the direction of flow of current is opposite to the flow of electron suppose i have a question over here i have a point x point y 0 volt 50 volt which is higher which is lower this is lower potential this is higher potential electrons flows from lower to higher current flows from higher to lower this is x this is y this is minus 10 volt this is minus 50 volt now this is minus 10 so this will be higher it is negative this is minus 50 more negative that is lower electrons flows from lower to higher here it is more negative charge electron will be repelled more here negative charge is less not that much repulsion this will force it and current will flow from higher to lower current always flows from lower potential sorry higher potential to lower potential now before ending it coming to the important discussion a point a, a point b again a point a point b potential 0 volt potential 0 volt potential 10 volt potential 100 volt current will flow from higher potential to lower this is higher this is lower current flow from higher to lower but will the current be same or different does current depend upon potential difference suppose water flows from much higher height to a much lower height the speed of water will be too much high in this case higher is the potential difference higher is the value of current if here the current is i the here current will be 10 i the potential difference in this case was 10 and in this case was 100 potential difference increases 10 times current will also increase 10 times higher is the potential difference higher is the current and this is ohm's law ohm's law stated that delta v is directly proportional to i more is the potential difference more is the current in a conductor provided temperature is constant and all physical condition remains same if all other physical conditions remain same then the potential difference across the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the current flowing through the conduction more is the potential difference more is the current more is delta v more is i and ohms prove this law but under a given condition when temperature is constant and all physical conditions remain same so delta v is directly proportional to i when we remove proportionality we write a constant i into r and this r is a constant delta v is equals to i r r is a constant and this constant r is called resistance v potential difference i current and r resistance what is constant among this? This resistance is a constant for a given material, for a given conductor. Across a given conductor, if the potential difference increases, the current will also increase because resistance is constant. And this is Ohm's law. So we'll begin our le next lecture from resistance and I'll cover resistance. Thank you.